Hey internet, welcome back to my channel. So today, I thought I would film a video where I kind of high level go through the different notebooks and journals that I plan to use for 2020. This might seem pretty ambitious to some people because it's a lot, <laughs> but I have included notebooks as well because I use notebooks just as much if not maybe more than some of my journals. I'm constantly in different notebooks for different topics, so I thought it would be fun to go through and explain why I picked this particular notebook or journal for that particular use. Um, and then I guess we'll see how 2020 goes and whether I actually end up using them all. Let me move all this off my desk and let me go through it one by one. All right, let's get started. This, as you can see, is my Erin Condren planner. I feel like I have this is probably my fourth or fifth Erin Condren planner now, um, the Life Planner, and I use these every single year. Um, I started using them more as an actual planning journal, and then I found that over the years, they've kind of migrated into kind of a half planning, but half memory keeping as well. And I noticed a lot of other YouTubers kind of calling them as memory keep or memory plan with me or something like that. Ugh, I can't remember the actual terminology for it, but it really more focused on writing down memories and stuff like that. So that's kind of what I'm going to use it for. I'm still going to half use it for planning. On the day I'm planning, I'm still technically planning that day and the next day, but the days previous to that are more memory keeping at that point. So it's kind of a mishmash, but also it's basically like a creative outlet. You know those paper craft kits that you can get or like little nano block Legos and you put them together and it's just a lot of fun. I have found that the Erin Condren Planner has kind of turned into that for me where I get to use these beautiful kits, I get to put it together, I feel like I'm very creative even though I'm just using the cre creativity of someone else who made that sticker kit, but it feels like a creative thing I can do whilst also journaling how my week has been, so that's what that's going to be used for. In terms of actual planning, then I'm going to be using this Archer and Olive bullet journal. Um, my bullet journal, I think this is probably the third or fourth year now I've used bullet journals, and I find them probably the most helpful in terms of actually planning out my week. And it's the most comprehensive because you can track all sorts of things. It's basically just a dot grid notebook that you customize to be whatever sort of journal you want. So I love tracking everything to do with my online life, my offline life, um, my massive to-do list for the day. Um, some weeks, if I have more than others, I can customize it to have a longer list or a shorter list, or if I'm feeling particularly creative, then I can draw things up. If you watch any of my bullet journal videos, then you pretty much already know that I do use this quite extensively. All right, I want to talk a little bit about these Erin Condren notebooks. I have two of them and they're used for two pretty different reasons. Um, I got these a couple years back, so I I'm pretty sure she still sells them and I've actually hacked and customized this one in particular. So this grey journal I'm going to be using or actually am using for studying for work related stuff. So nothing to do with YouTube or my personal life. This is really to do with my professional career. I work in IT and I attend a lot of different training courses. Um, and the world of technology is constantly evolving. So as you can see, I have these tabs that I put in on the side. I love using tabs. This one was AWS, so I was doing a bunch of studying for AWS. You can just see my really <laughs> not so great notes, but this is what I mean by customizing. This page actually doesn't exist here. I ripped it out from a previous section back here and pasted it in just because I wanted to extend, um, write more about uh, virtual private cloud in relation to the AWS landscape and the notes made more sense to be in this section than further back so that's why I just stuck paper in here and so for me it's kind of a very scrapbooky sort of notebook um, but yeah I try to color coordinate my notes as much as possible just because it makes me happy it's very like aesthetically pleasing but I also know I'm not the greatest note taker but these were all the notes that I took when I was studying for the AWS exam which I passed last year, very grateful for that. Um, I also took a course in some product management, so um, these are some of the notes that I took. Some of them are quite empty, and I've made notes I need to draw in different pictures to complete the notes, but yeah. So yeah, this particular notebook is all for training and IT related stuff for my career. So the pink book is actually similar. It's for training courses I'm taking, but training more for stuff outside my day job. So um, it could be my personal life, like mental well-being. It could be for YouTube. It could be for social media. It could be for like different ways to grow businesses, things like that. 
it's pretty empty at the moment. Right now I started a guided meditation course, so I've been just taking notes of the course as I go through it. Um, so that's what this one is going to be for. So these two notebooks are kind of like training or education notebooks. Then this particular notebook you would have seen in my Hobonichi haul. It is basically a notebook using Hobonichi Techo paper. And that's it. It's just like gridded paper. But if you... It's pretty small. I'm using this notebook to translate different manga. So you can see my very poor attempt at trying to... I'm trying to translate right now uh, Marmalade Boy Little. I'm obsessed with that series. And there aren't any really good translations online, which is what triggered it. I was reading it online and the internet had only translated it up to chapter 15 and that really bugged me because I wanted to know what happened next. So I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna buy the manga and I'm just gonna translate it myself. So I've been translating for quite a while now. You can see, oh, I have like a cardstock here for Coffee Monster Co, which I use kind of like backing paper so that the paper, the pen, pencil doesn't imprint on each page, but I've been doing quite a bit of translating and it's a lot of fun. The learning process for Japanese is so painfully slow, but I feel like this is a fun way to do it. So I don't really count this as studying for Japanese or anything. This is more just for fun, but you kind of passively learn Japanese because you learn all the new kanji. And what's really annoying, just like a side rant, Marmalade Boy Little I think is aimed at adults, so there's no furigana, which makes it even harder to translate. I really regret starting with that manga. I wish I'd started with like Sailor Moon or Card Captor Sakura because all of that comes with furigana because I think it's aimed at a younger audience. But because this is more adult, um, they assume adults don't need furigana to help them. And for those of you who don't know, furigana is the little hiraganas that sit above kanji. So when you see kanji, um, like, this is my very bad writing, but kanji over here. It's hard to know what this kanji stands for, for me at least, unless I have like little hiragana on top. But uh, yeah, so that's what I wanted to use this for. I think it's going to consume the entire notebook, the series. It might consume more than this. So if I do end up finishing this notebook, I'm just going to purchase another one because I like the idea of them all being really consistent. So this one is my Hobonichi Techo cousin. I use the little original... I originally used it for a lot of watercoloring. I still intend to, but I don't really know if I'm gonna like religiously stick with it, which is why I didn't want to include it in this video. I just wanted to include things in this video that I knew hand on heart, I am 99.9% .9 sure I will use. So I'm gonna be using this particular notebook. Well, it's not a notebook, it's a planner. I'm gonna use this planner for my Japanese studies in terms of I need to do a lot of studying at home, not necessarily related just to the class, not just having fun translating manga, but literally stepping through different textbooks and studying. And one of my goals for 2020 is to do at least half an hour, like 30 minutes of studying, self-study every single day. But what I like about this is one way I can stay honest with myself is that because you have each of the days as a full page, every day that I'm doing the study, I'm going to do it on that day so I can see day by day what I'm actually studying. And if I skip a day, then I can like highlight it. Like it's much more noticeable that I'm skipping days. So that's what I want to use the cousin for. Um, that's not all for Japanese study. This is actually my notebook that I take to class. So it is filled with lots of notes in class. Like, I think I've almost finished the notebook. There's like one or two... Yeah, there's one page left. But I do have some refills attached to here and I purchased like a whole chunk of refills for it. So I'm going to take these old notes out, bind them, and then start off fresh. But this is basically the notebook I take to class every single week. And the class, um, I do all my homework in here and everything. So I'm going to continue using this. I realized I have three notebooks dedicated to Japanese. So if I am not fluent by the end of 2020, something went really wrong. <laughs> This one is kind of like a random notebook. It's not going to be really used for anything except taking notes for YouTube videos. So a lot of the time when I film YouTube videos, I like to prep things beforehand, especially if I'm doing anything makeup related or I'm filming or talking to the camera because it's a lot harder, I find, to edit that stuff together to make me sound coherent. <laughs> so I feel like I need to go in prepared. So for example, when I film my review and resolutions um, 2020 video, I just wrote down my resolutions and I wrote down the resolutions for 2020 and just some extra notes. It's, it's really messy. Um, but I intentionally bought this particular notebook because it was like $4 or something from Officeworks. So I didn't feel bad about writing really scruffy in it and messy. But what it will allow me to do is like when I film a Plan With Me video 
and I want to make sure that I feature certain things on each day like so many times I will do a plan with me and realize oh I didn't include the fact that I released this video on Tuesday but now there's no space in the spread to put that in so I want to make notes of that in here and not have to worry about whether it looks nice or anything like that so that I can constantly refer to it when I am filming when at the time of filming the video so that's what this is used for I figured that I'd have these like dividers here for different channels so the front would be fables and fashion this one might be a beautiful fable and this one could be something else. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like my scrappy notebook if that makes sense. I feel like, you know how a lot of people have a dump drawer in their house where they just put all sorts of random stuff in that when people come to visit? This is pretty much it um, for me in terms of plannering and stuff. I just scrap it all here and then do the nice version I guess later. Alright, we got two more planners. I'm getting there. So this next planner, I just want to make sure I can actually show what's in it because I don't know if I have everything that I can show yet. But this, actually, <laughs> I'm such a mess. Um, this particular planner is a Kiki Key ring bound planner in the large size that I purchased four years ago. It's pretty old now. And I've been using this actually to help run some elements of the sticker shop. So, um, yeah, all right, I can show you guys this. This are the stickers that I put next to stamps when I send out orders so it says hi my name is Stampy and I was not licked just to let people know that I don't lick my stamps I don't know why I thought that was something I wanted to take note of when I started up the sticker shop but I always use stamps that already have adhesive like they're like stickers themselves so I can put them on um, and I just wanted people to know I wasn't licking their stamps so they don't feel grossed out by it so I have a lot of these pre-cut and made so when I do pack orders I pull this notebook out there's other things at the back as well in terms of like costings for the shop and um, schedules and stuff like that. So I'm not going to show it all because it's still a work in progress and a lot of it is like financially related. But I want to deck out this a little bit more so that maybe I can show elements of it. I want to decorate it right now. It feels very functional. But I love the idea of having like a really beautiful decorative ring bound planner that I can use for the shop. And it turns out that I really love the idea of the ring round planner, but I don't think it's going to be very decorative. So if I want to do, say, a more aesthetically pleasing ring bound planner, I might have to use a different one. I'm not really sure yet. I'm still like going through my head as to what makes sense. But this is what I actively use right now for the shop. It's pretty boring, but I love it. It's very functional and it helps keep things on track when I'm doing orders. And then the last planner will be one you've seen in my Jibun Techo comparison video. This actually is a small version. I flipped through the bigger version just so that you could more clearly see the things in the planner. But this is the mini version and I want to use this one for work because it is a week by week plan. So because for me work takes up the majority of my day, I can write down all the different meetings and notes that I need to be aware of. I'm really not sure how much use I'm going to get out of the planner just because so much of my work is quite digitized now. But there's so many like random moments at work when bringing your laptop just doesn't make sense and I have a notebook but then I end up losing the notes and I feel like if I have a planner I'll be able to write on the day and I'll know which week or which day to refer to so I know when whoever said what came up. So that's my plan. I'm a little bit shaky about how this will be used and I'm really sad that I feel everything I use for work doesn't tend to be nice and neat. I feel like when it's at home and I get to plan, I get the time and the headspace to like write down and have nice handwriting, it looks much better. But when I take it to work, the priority isn't to keep the planner looking pretty. The priority is to get work done. So that's my only fear. I don't want to ruin the journal, but I bought the journal to use. So that's what it's going to have to be. So yeah, those are all the planners, notebooks, uh, ring bound planners, whatever you want that I'm planning to use for 2020. It's quite a lot, but I think all of them have a pretty solid reason. So yeah, I hope you found this video useful. I will try to link as many of these down below if you are interested in picking up one for yourself. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. This is Selena reporting from my room. Back to internet. Mm -hmm.